So, so far we ran a hypothesis test for a left tail test. In this question, we have a right tail test. Let us read the question carefully. To compare the amount spent in the first three months by clients of two meal replacement diets, a researcher randomly select 20 clients for each diet. The mean amount spent for diet A is $643. Assume the population standard deviation is given to us as 89. The mean amount spent for second diet, diet B, is $588. And assume the population standard deviation is $75. At 1% level of significance, can the researcher support the claim that the mean amount spent in the first three months by clients of diet A is more than, greater than, the mean amount spent in the first three months by client B? Very good. So it's definitely a Z-test. Why? because we are comparing the population means and you have two different diets, two different sets of clients and sigma one, sigma two or population standard deviations are given to us. So let us follow these steps. Verify sigma one and sigma two are given. Let us go back to the question. The question says for diet A, the average is 643 with standard deviation of 89 for population. So we have sigma 1, 89. For the second population, well, we took a sample and the sample mean is 588 with the population standard deviation of $75. So sigma 1 and sigma 2 are given. We have a random selection and they are definitely independent from each other. You have a set of clients for diet A, another set of clients for diet B, so they are independent from each other. And let's see what else is given to us. We also know that the populations are normally distributed. Let's see. Do we have any information about that written here? Well, we assume the population are normally distributed. Otherwise, we cannot apply these steps. Step the uh, claim mathematically. Very good. So look for the claim. Claim, where is the claim? You have a researcher randomly selected clients and then that researcher says that the mean amount spent in the first three months by client A is greater than. So this is the key word for you, greater than. Very good. What's the meaning of that? It means that the alternative hypothesis is given to you, everybody. So the claim says mu one is more than mu two. It's opposite, it's complement is mu one less than equals to mu two. What's the next step? Identify the level of significance, which is given to us as 1%. Determine the critical values and the rejection region. Perfect. Since you have a right tail test, mu1 is more than mu2, so you have a right tail test. And your alpha is 1%, z sub 0 is 2.33 using inverse norm. So as long as your z standardized test statistic is inside the rejection region, it means that it's more than 2.33, you reject the null hypothesis. But you need to do the calculation. Z is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar. 
minus mu one minus mu two divided by square root of sigma one squared over n one plus sigma two squared over n two. X one bar, where is that? The first diet average, which is 643 minus X two bar, which is 588. We're going to copy that here. Minus the difference between population means always assume it is zero. Divided by the first standard deviation is 89. Divided by, well, we have 20 clients plus the second standard deviation is 75. Raise it to the second power and divide by N2, which is 20. When we do the calculation, this is the standardized test that tested that we have 2.11. Well, is 2.11 on the right hand side of 2.33? Remember that you have a right tail test. So as long as this number is on the right-hand side of 2.33, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, you can say that, well, not that case. Since Z is less than 2.33, it means that it's not in the rejection region. So you say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. When you fail to reject the null hypothesis, it means that you support the null hypothesis. So when you support the null hypothesis, you're going to reject the claim. Why? Because the claim and the alternative hypothesis are the same thing. There is not enough evidence at 1% level of significance to support the claim that the mean amount spent in the first three months by clients of diet A is more than the mean amount spent in the first three months by clients of the second diet. But let's take a look at our calculator. What does calculator present for us? So let me share the screen with you and show you where to go and how to use a calculator to make sure you have a correct calculation. You're going to go to stat and you're going to go to tests. In the tests, you have two sample and it is a Z test because sigma one and sigma two are given to you. Click on that. We don't have the data, but we have the statistics. So what is the first uh, population standard deviation? The first population standard deviation is 89. So you're gonna enter 89 here. Sigma sub two, the second population standard deviation, which is 75. Very good. So let us enter 75 and go to the first sample average, which is 643. 643. And then first sample size 20. The second average is 588. And the second sample size is also 20. Well, Remember to change this because you have mu1 more than mu2. So you're going to select this and go to the next stop and do the calculation. When you do the calculation, the standardized test statistic is 2.11, which is exactly the same as what you did before. You can use p-value instead of rejection region. The p-value, probability value, is point. 0, 0172 and as you can see this number is more than one percent it's a little bit more than one percent it is 1.7 percent right so what's the meaning of that it means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis because of p-value p-value is not less than alpha so you fail to reject the null hypothesis so again it doesn't matter if you use rejection region or you use p-value. Both of them give you the exact same result. You can also graph this as well. So if you go to stat and go to tests and go back and check your okay, to sample z-test and go to last line, draw, it graphs it for you. You have a right tail test. P-value is this little value, little area here. 